Good afternoon. Hello. How are you today? It's another lovely sunny day, isn't it? I'm just swapping my glasses over so you can see the screen a little. I can see the screen a little better and you can hopefully see me without the glare from my glasses. So just wait for a few minutes to um, see who joins us today in this Strategies for Being a Brilliant session. I'm going to be talking about comparisonitis. So comparisonitis is the tendency that we all have to look at other people and compare ourselves. And the reason that it tends to be quite damaging is that we don't often compare ourselves positively. We compare ourselves and we find ourselves wanting and we end up feeling a bit um, uh, low about ourselves and um, well, yeah, it can produce some jealousy about the other person as well and in the long run that's not the best place to be if we are trying to achieve something ourselves so comparisonitis is something that i have suffered from in the past and oh, probably about two months ago i had an acute attack of it myself which i will tell you about during today's session so i'm going to be sharing some ideas from the book strategies for being brilliant and if you've got a copy of the book it's chapter 13, Stop Making Comparisons. And if you haven't got a copy of the book, it doesn't matter because I'm going to share the ideas from this book with you today. So if you've joined us, do feel free to say hello. There is a comment box underneath uh, the picture where you can see me. Type in hello, let us know that you're here. And if you've got any questions, type them into the box as well. Very happy to answer those. So we're going to be live on here for around 20 minutes um, and then on Friday at lunchtime again we will be doing the Friday catch up which is a chance for you to check in and join in, uh, tell us how you've got on with uh, any of the ideas that you've put into practice this week or maybe you've been um, tuning in regularly and you've had a chance to put some of the ideas into practice over the last few weeks your opportunity there to let us know how you're getting on and also ask any questions that you would like to as well. Okay, so we've been live for a few minutes. So I'm going to make a start on today's session. Hello. Hi, Nicola. Lovely to see you. Glad you could make it. So comparisonitis. This is a session that I think is relevant to you, whether you're an adult. It's also relevant to you, whether you are, uh, whether you're a young person as well and if you've got teenagers in the house especially some of the things from this session might be very useful so comparisonitis the tendency we have to compare ourselves negatively to other people and usually find ourselves wanting which leaves us feeling uh, low um, and generally not very good about ourselves and at our least resourceful it can stop us that kind of negative energy can stop us from moving forward and achieve what we want to achieve so I suffered from comparisonitis uh, when I first started out in business so we're going back now I'm in my 10th year of running my own business those of you who don't know much about me my background was in teaching I was a teacher for best part of 20 years the last eight of which were overseas. Catherine, hi, lovely to see you. Ratner's here as well, fantastic. So the last eight of those were overseas and I moved back to the UK in the summer of 2010, set up my business and set about networking and building up a community. And I would obviously come across lots of people in my networking that did similar things to me. I was just starting out those people were invariably uh, very experienced, had lots of clients, um, burgeoning, growing, healthy businesses, or so I thought at the time. And what I would do is, after meeting people like that at networking events, I would often get an attack of comparisonitis and I would end up comparing myself to them and, you know what? really finding myself wanting and uh, getting quite envious of what I saw as signs of their success. Ratna, Catherine, hi. Lovely. Um, and you know what? It was a really not a very nice place to be and it started holding me back and I, I really 
wanted to know what I could do to overcome this. And in the book, I talk about several um, several strategies I use. I'm going to share probably about sort of five or six of them today that I have found most useful when it comes to this. And it does rear its head again, a bit like the imposter syndrome that I talked about last week. Um, I'm not immune to this. I don't pretend to be, but uh, particularly with the, la the last episode of this that I had, I learned something really important that I hope in future will kind of knock this thing definitely on the head. So here are some strategies for you. If you find yourself comparing yourself negatively to other people and envying their success, their accomplishments and achievements, these are some tips that I hope will help you to look at those situations with a fresh mindset that might empower you to um, focus more on yourself. So the first thing uh, I, I, I would say to you is to look at others that you're comparing yourself to as a source of inspiration and learn for them, learn from them. Um, and behind this is the thought that even if one other person is successfully doing something we want to do, then it's entirely possible for us to do it as well. Um, other people's achievements prove that your dreams are capable of coming true. So they are a living, walking and talking source of inspiration for you to aspire to and learn from. And in that sense, I think comparing ourselves to other people can be quite motivating and inspiring rather than um, providing us with a, um, which is, I suspect, what um, a lot of people do in those situations. I'd also say the second point I'd like to make is that it's OK still to be learning. About two years ago, we went to Barcelona and we went to the Sagrada Familia. I don't know if you if, uh, you know that. It's this most magnificent cathedral building in Barcelona and it's been a work in progress for decades. And as I was standing staring at it, it made me think and reflect on the fact that we're all works in progress. At whatever stage in life, in our careers, in our businesses, we are. Um, it's a very healthy viewpoint to see yourself as a lifelong learner. Uh, and I think it's when we stop seeing ourselves as a lifelong learner that we run into problems. So we are always learning um, and there's nothing wrong with being new and there's nothing wrong with starting from the beginning in any endeavour that we attempt. And there's also nothing wrong to still be learning from people we meet along the way. That is a perfectly healthy thing to do and um, it's a positive thing to do as well. Um, so the next point I want to make is, and this ties in with something that I mentioned when we were talking about the imposter syndrome, and this is the importance of recognising your own achievements and celebrating them. I think sometimes when we look at other people and we find ourselves wanting, it's because we haven't actually got front of mind and really a solid, firm, strong grip on our own sense of self-worth and our own um, our own past CV, our own set of uniqueness that makes us who we are. I can't emphasise enough how important that is to really get your head around and understand it. When you know exactly what it is that you are good at, what your strengths are, what you've achieved, everything you've overcome and all your successes, that really does act as this internal bolster. And when you are focusing on that, it makes you, I think, less susceptible to look at other people and see them as something that perhaps they're not. There's another quote that I came across while I was writing this book. Um, it says, don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 21. And I think that's so true. You never know what's going on for anybody else. But if you concentrate on yourself, I, I think that's a, a really solid foundation and there's a phrase I used a few weeks ago when I was doing some writing and that is stay in your own lane you know what don't let yourself be sidetracked focus on where you are going and what you are there to achieve and again when you do that and don't let yourself be distracted too much by what other people are doing what's going on around you that can help you to um, minimize the effect of this comparisonitis
Um, other people's achievements, the next point here, does not make yours any less valid. Uh, and I think that's a really, really important point to make. And I'd like to tell you a little story about something that happened to me very recently. So as you know, I've published a couple of books. I've been writing since I started out in business. Writing's been a really powerful vehicle for me to get my ideas across and to market my business and to grow it. And it's often the first touch point that people have with me. I published my second book about 18 months ago and I follow some coaches very closely. I admire them. I do guest blogs for other coaches. And there was one American uh, leadership coach that I've written for her site loads uh, and I know her well. We've had virtual catch ups and uh, conversations over the years and she's published her first book. Um, I think it was probably around about the beginning of the year, I think. And I saw a few posts from her on social media. Now, she's American and um, and that is that is that that is that there is a point I'm making here. She was tweeting saying that the advance orders for her book had just topped the 4000 mark and she collected a whole string of fantastic five star reviews on Amazon. And I was instantly hit like a sledgehammer by this comparisonitis. Suddenly I spiralled into this. <gasps> well, that that's that's that didn't happen for me. What, what, what about my book? I mean, m my books are great and they sell well, but I didn't have a four thousand uh, a 4,000 advance order for either of my books. I will be completely honest and say that now. And I don't know many people that do. Um, but it instantly sent me into this spiral that kind of ate me up for a couple of days. But then I started to think and I started to calm myself down and apply a process of logic. And the logic went something like this. You know, she is um, her background is in corporate America. She is writing for a corporate American audience. She is en entirely engrossed in that market, highly respected. She writes for Forbes, uh, Inc. magazines, all of the big business journals she writes for. She has a huge, and I mean huge, 60 odd thousand followers on one Twitter account alone. Why on earth wouldn't she have a 4,000 pound, uh, 4,000 book advance order. And when I started thinking along those lines, it kind of stopped me in my tracks and kind of made me think, hold on a minute, Sue, you're comparing sort of apples to oranges here, surely. You know, um, she's got a far bigger audience. She's much more experienced. And doesn't she deserve to have that kind of success with her book? And the point I'm making here really, I think, is at that point, it suddenly hit me that what's most helpful for me, at any rate, in these sorts of situations is to exercise a little humility. You know what? A little humility. Um, there is nothing wrong. She deserves that success. I needed to get my ego out of the way. One thing I do say to um, clients who are a little bit worried about how other people might respond to their own good fortune in life is that it's OK for you to have opportunities and for other people not to have them. And I wholeheartedly believe that, um, you know, we act as role models when we step up to the mark and we show people what we can do. But the reverse is also true. It's also OK for other people to have those opportunities and for us not to have them. And that was kind of a really penny dropping moment for me. Uh, and I have to say, I did feel quite ashamed of myself for reveling in those two days where I was in this spiral of what about me? What about me? Do you know what? It's nothing to do with me. And actually, I should be really pleased for her. And I am tremendously pleased for her. And this was a really, really important lesson for me to learn. And I think it's one of the main points I'd really like you to take away from this today. It's OK for other people to have these opportunities. It doesn't take away anything from us and our opportunities. We need to learn to stay in our own lane, not be distracted, distracted and feel 
pleased and celebrate other people's good fortune and opportunities. A dose of humility, getting your ego well out of the way is what's needed here. Um, and it worked a treat for me. Uh, the other point I want to make here as well is often when we compare ourselves to other people or we see somebody doing something that we would like to do or achieve something we'd like to achieve rather than feeling pleased for them sometimes we get that little resentful inner voice oh well what do they think they're doing oh well that's not oh, 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 and all the rest of it the truth is this what we're really doing there is recognizing that we are not taking the action that we really know we should take we've put things off we've not been proactive we've sat on our backsides and we've watched as somebody else is actually achieving something we really wanted to achieve and i think it's a time to question why why ha why aren't we doing that why aren't we achieving it what is it that person is doing that we're not and again that's a another piece of the whole thinking puzzle around this other coach you know she spent years building up a huge market um, and a big community for what she does and she deserves that um yeah, so if you do suffer from comparisonitis, I hope some of these ideas are kind of hitting home for you. Um, it just, it, that last point in particular about humility really hit home with me and it has changed how I look at other people's signs of success. I'm not resentful and I am able now to celebrate for them and feel happy. And the task this week... And whether you do it this week or not doesn't matter, but I like to leave you with something is this. Um, who is it that you admire and what can you learn from them? And what if they were instead of a source of um, negative energy and disappointment for you focused on yourself? What if they were a source of motivation and inspiration instead? OK, so who do you admire and what can you learn from them? I was talking about this to a coaching client this morning. Um, what lessons are there? What could you take away from their approach and put into practice yourself? It's not about changing your personality or being something you're not, but we often learn things from other people. What is it about their behaviour, their attitude, their energy? Uh, what, do, what do they bring to situations that you see works really well for them? And how could you learn to have a little bit of that yourself? Right, we're coming up for the 20 minutes. I'm going to leave it there. Has anybody got any questions that they would like to ask or any comments they'd like to make? How is comparisonitis for you? Is it something that you um, find yourself in the grip of occasionally or very often? Let me know in the comment box. I'll be around for just a couple more minutes before I bring this to an end. Um, as I say, that particular last point for me um, has really, it's been a bit of a game changer. Um, Get your ego out of the way. This isn't about you. It's about somebody else. And, and if you've got uh, youngsters, teenagers, you know what? I think this is a really valuable lesson for them to learn, particularly with the prevalence of social media and um, perhaps combining that with encouraging them to switch off a little bit can produce a much healthier mindset when it comes to standing in our, standing in our own strength and feeling pleased uh, for other people and their achievements. So, any more? Got a few comments through here. Uh, anybody else got anything they would like to ask or comment on? I'll be here on Friday, Friday lunchtime at 12.30 for the Friday catch-up. Uh, then from next week, we're going back to Mondays. I've had a couple of weeks where I've had a bit of a diary clash. I'm going back to Mondays from next week. So Monday, next Monday, 12.30, there'll be another Strategies for Being a Brilliant session. I haven't quite decided which one I'm going to do yet. So if you've got anything you would particularly like me to speak about, please let me know. Type it in the box or message me uh, and I will uh, take your requests Um Add your requests to my list. So, OK, I don't think there's anything else that anyone's added. So I'm going to say goodbye and um, hopefully I will see you all on Friday at 12.30 for the Friday catch up. And we can have a bit of a chat about how you've been getting on with these ideas and whether um, 
you know, who is the person that you admire? What qualities have they got? And what have you learned from them? So hope to see you all again on Friday. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a good, safe week and speak to you all soon. Bye.